Hello beautiful people and welcome to my corner in African woman that shall we call Speak My Mind. I am your host Modern Makotingo Veni and the podcast is all things womanhood experience through my lenses. Today's episode focuses on the love letters that I write on the platform. So, grab your cup of coffee and let us get started. Look at us. We made it through the first week of January. Well, sort of. <laughs> but I hope that it has been nothing but relaxation and rest for you. Today's episode focuses on the love letters that are written on the platform that are words of admiration to the amazing women I have met through my life in which I talk about the life lessons that I have absorbed through them. You see, everyone you meet in your life plays a part of some sort in your story and others actually become a huge chapter of your life. And these love letters expresses that. My hope is that when you read them and when your spirit is low, their love letters will remind you that someone is looking at you and you are an inspiration to them. As Simon Sinek said, Life is beautiful not because of the things we see or do, but because of the people we meet. And that's why life is beautiful. Each letter has a focus word, and that word represents the lessons that I have learned from the woman that I dedicated the letter to. The focus word of this letter is leisure and luxury. And the woman I dedicate the letter to is Nelisa, or as I call her, Nelly. For the purpose of the letter, leisure represents the time that one takes when you are not working or doing any other activities, while luxury represents an indulgence in something that gives you pleasure, satisfaction, as well as ease. Now, I want to give you a bit of a uh, background of my relationship with this amazing, artistic, and festive woman. I met her through my husband's friendship with her husband. And the first time we met, we were at Bramfontein Farmer's Market. Initially, I think I was a bit skeptical. I'm not very good at making friends. It's like one of my, I don't know, not my strongest point because I'm so, the thing with me is when I first meet you, I have a tendency of observing how you are and then I will automatically just know if I can vibe with you or not. But sometimes, it's just somehow, I just instantly spark with someone and I just know that, yep. Yeah, I dig this person and she is one of those people. When I first met her, she was so welcoming, so so open. And that is one thing about her that I really love and admire. And from then on, we formed a friendship and we've been friends since then. And, you know, we've been through each other's weddings. We've seen each other have babies. And it's been, yeah, it's been a very amazing friendship. Sisterhood is very important to your life as a woman because of the nurturing that you get from other women. You can never get from any other friendship than the friendship you have with women. So what I learned from this amazing, beautiful woman is that leisure and luxury are an important element of your life for self-care. The thing with me is I have always wore the armor of the strong black woman. In that, I have always been extremely independent, never requiring help. Do not understand that resting is important. Nobody is going to die because you're taking time for yourself. No one, they, everything that you leave behind to just spot, it will still be there. And that is something I had to unlearn. But also we need to remember that some of these uh, behaviors that we have, 
It's because of how we've, we've been raised and how society actually has made us believe this is normal. And with a lot of black women, it is primarily categorized that they have to have this strong, independent, the stressed out and accepting bare minimum mindset that, you know, you cannot be accustomed to that. But these women are not, the generation of today, they're changing this. They're believing in femininity, rest, relaxation, and a bit of luxury. And all of this is coming from the concept of what I said previously on the other episode, which is the soft life era. And that is what I actually was so, what could I say that I just saw instantly from her. Because the thing with self-care is that we all do it very differently. We don't, we all don't have the same definition of self-care. But having people who show you the importance of having that in your life really pushes you to do better for yourself. And I think for the longest time, because I was so used to always doing everything for myself, not even to the point where spoiling myself was like and something I'm accustomed to. I had to learn to spoil myself with no guilt, but also to allow others to spoil me as well. And this was very hard for the longest time. But then, like I said before, when you have people presenting a specific mannerism around you, you end up really attract you end up actually accustoming yourself to that behavior and then I really did start to spoil myself I took myself out for lunch spoil myself for something expensive that I enjoyed like I really went in into you know making myself a priority without feeling guilty and the other one way I had to learn to allow people to spoil me was really hard. And why? It's because of I, I re- I've been so independent for so long that I did everything by myself. Even from the previous relationships, I never really allowed in none of, I never allowed the person I was dating to spoil me because I always felt like there's some sort of a motive behind their behavior. And she really made me unlearn that behavior. She really made me change that so that I can allow the current person that I currently am with now to do that because that really, that really changed the way I approached things with him. And that was the biggest turn for me, especially when it comes to my independence, to allow somebody to spoil me and to spoil myself without feeling any guilt. The other thing which oh it it had an even bigger, bigger impact into my life after being a mom was self boundaries. It's so easy for us to put boundaries to other people, but very, very hard when we have to do it to ourselves because we always somehow let things slide with ourselves. And I think that's when I really, really needed her to slap me back into my reality. Because I remember I was crying about how hard motherhood is, how much I'm resenting certain things. And then she's like, it's because you have no boundaries. She would explain to me what she meant about that. She'd be like, you need to make time for yourself. You cannot spend your entire whole time nurturing other people and not nurturing yourself. And from then, I introduced my leisure, which is me time, and which is always on Sunday, regardless of whatever I'm doing. But Sunday, it's all about me. And because of that, it really, it it changed the way I was approaching my experience with my baby. And it changed my experience of motherhood to the point now I really am enjoying being her mom more than I did then. And so now I hope that you understand that Self-care is about you establishing healthy boundaries to cultivate your daily enjoyment and comfort as well as ease. 
And then the combination of leisure and luxury brings you nothing but enjoyment and introduces you to adapt to the soft life, which has shown me that I am deserving of joy, unconditional love, safety, and ease. From Andrew Lord's words, caring for myself is not self-indulgence. It is actually self-preservation, and that is an act of political welfare. And I'm closing our episode with the love letter written to the most amazing lady in my life. Self-care is an important aspect of womanhood. It allows you to be self-aware through tuning into your body and taking time to nourish it properly. By making it part of your routine, you improve your mental health and you become more confident, creative and productive. It has been a privilege to be able to observe this through you. Through you, I have seen that self-care involves two concepts, leisure and luxury. Where leisure involves spending time, not working, instead relaxing, while luxury involves indulging oneself in something pleasant and satisfying. For you have shown me that when you allow yourself to experience self-care through leisure and luxury, you become blissful, you make better decisions, you build stronger relationships, and you communicate more effectively. Your wholesome and traditional aura makes you a gentle yet tough soul, while your confidence and self-awareness allows your ability to strive without limits. You are a testimony that self-care is a love language to one's body. To you from me, independent, ambitious, and charismatic Nelisa. I see your genuine, fearless nature. Your outgoing and limitless mindset vibrates to the highest level that anyone who passes by you becomes aware. That is all for today's episode. Thank you so much. See you next time.